Okay, so now we're going to solve equations. Our solving method is going to be factoring. We're just going to build on um, what we did in the last video. So how can you use factoring to solve this equation? x squared plus 9x equals negative 20. So one thing I want to point out, when you are solving for x, see how we have an x squared term and we have an x to the first power term? These are not like terms, so we can't put those together into one term and then solve for that x. When you have an x squared and another x, you have to change your solving method. We can't just solve this like a regular old equation. Um, and in this lesson, the method that we're going to use will be factoring. So step one, write the equation in standard form. So what that's going to mean is you want to set your equation equal to zero. Get everything on one side, zero on the other side. So if we look at our equation, um, how do you know which side? Do you want everything on the left side of the equal sign or the right side of the equal sign? So my best advice for this is you want your leading term, that x squared term, to be positive. So if it's positive where it is, get everything to that side. Um, if we were to subtract the x squared to get everything to the right side of our equation, we're dealing with a negative x squared. and We don't want to factor that negative x squared. So we are going to add 20 to both sides, and that's going to give us x squared plus 9x, and then that plus 20. That 20 is not a like term with the x squared and the 9x, so we just put it on the end, plus 20, and now equals 0. So now we have an equation in standard form. It is a quadratic equation because of the x squared. Remember, if your degree of your um, expression is 2, that is quadratic. All right, so step 2, factor the equation and rewrite in factored form. So this is our trinomial. Let's take note that it's an x squared term. When you have a number in front of the x squared, we have to think through how that changes our factoring. But in this case, it's just an x squared, so we can go right to our c value. We're looking for factors of c that add up to b. So factors of 20 that add up to 9. Um, if you can think of them in your head without writing out your factor pairs, great. That is where I would like all of us to get. Um, if it helps you to write out your factor pairs, that is fine too. So there's all the factor pairs. We can see that the 4 and the 5 will add up to the 9. So let's rewrite this in factored form. We're going to say x plus 4 times x plus 5, and we just carry down our equal 0. Now that we have factored form, we can use the zero product property to solve the equation. So we just take each factor and set it equal to zero. These are just nice little one-step equations. We're going to subtract 4, so x is a negative 4. We'll subtract 5, and x is also a negative 5. One thing I want to point out just for us to keep in mind, when we're solving quadratic equations and we find these values of x, essentially we're figuring out what x is when your function is equal to zero, so when the y is zero. So these are x-intercepts of the graph. This is where your parabola crosses the x-axis. So it's good just to always tie in what the visual of these equations would look like. These would be parabolas because of the x squared. And then when we solve for x, we are finding where they cross the x-axis or the x-intercepts. All right, so we're going to practice this a little bit more. We'll be able to run through it a little bit faster. Um, solve each equation by factoring. Um, we need to put it in standard form, so everything on one side of the equal sign, zero on the other, so this one's ready for us to go. Notice it is just an x squared as our leading term, so we can jump to our 64. 
what are factors of 64 that add up to 16. Um, that might be one where you say, oh, 64 we know is 8 times 8, and 8 plus 8 is 16. So it just happened to pop into my head first. That's okay. You know, use that. You don't necessarily have to write down every factor pair if you can come up with it a little bit faster. So when we factor this, we have x plus 8 times x plus 8, carry down your equals 0. Now we're going to use the zero product property, set each factor equal to 0. So what's unique about this problem is our first factor was x plus 8, so I set that equal to 0. And our second factor is x plus 8. So I don't need to write a second equation because I'm just going to get the same answer as this because those are the same factors. So here's an example of we only have one equation, so we're only going to get one solution for x. So what does that mean when you only have one solution for x? If we think about this is a parabola, that means that our parabola crosses or touches the x-axis in just one spot. Um, that will always happen, we could just make a little note, um, when the two factors are the same. Oops. So when the two factors are the same, there is only one solution. Here's what that would look like. You know, we know that that solution is where we're crossing or hitting the x-axis. So if x equals negative 8, negative 8 is somewhere over there on the x-axis. That is where your vertex will be. If you only have one solution, that means the vertex is on the x-axis. Our a value is a positive 1, so this parabola is opening up. So it's going to look something like that. So anytime you're getting just one solution because you have that same factor twice, this is what a picture of that would look like. So it's always good just to understand how it all fits together. All right, part B. We want to put it in standard form, so set our equation equal to zero. X squared is positive on the left side, so let's get everything to the left side. We will start by subtracting 64. So X squared 64 is not a like term with anything else, so let's write it in order, minus 12x minus 64 equals 0. We notice that it's just an x squared term, so we can find factors of negative 64 that add up to negative 12. So 1 and 64, 2 and 32. Um, another thing to keep in mind, that is a negative 64. So we know that we need a positive and a negative factor to multiply to give us that negative 64. Good rule of thumb, if you organize your factor pairs the way that I write mine out, where it's always the smaller number on the left, the larger number on the right, we can, we can follow, we can do that. <laughs> we can do this. The larger factors, so the ones on the right side, will always have the same sign as the B value for what the two numbers have to add up to equal. So that just tells me right away, I know I'm going to have the larger factor negative. Those two that we've come up with so far do not add up to negative 12, so keep going. 3 is not a factor, 4 is a factor 16 times, and I'll make the 16 negative, and that adds up to negative 12. So factored form, x plus 4 times x minus 16 equals 0. When you have factored form set equal to 0, use the zero product property. Set each factor equal to zero and solve. 
we will subtract 4, so x equals negative 4, add 16, positive 4 and 16. And again on a graph, your parabola is crossing the x-axis in those two spots.